Portugal, also the uh, rotating presidency of the European Union. Antonio, you have the floor. Thank you, dear Ursula Caro Mario. In this Global Health Summit, we are called upon to prepare the future while still combating the current pandemic. The Portuguese presidency of the European Union Council coincided with some of the worst phases of the pandemic, but also with the vaccination rollout and the start of the recovery. Let me start on vaccination. Science and scientific international cooperation allowed us to develop and produce vaccines in record time. We must now focus on promoting widespread access to vaccines by expanding manufacturing capacities, preventing supply chain bottlenecks and removing export restrictions. That is why we should not be distracted from our immediate needs. Speed up manufacturing and distribution of vaccines to all, guaranteeing immunization as a global public good. The European Union is doing its part. It leads in supporting research and development of vaccines and in financing their production and distribution. The European Union and its member states are among the lead contributors to COVAX and the EU is setting up a European vaccine sharing mechanism directed to partner countries. Second, we must deal with the social and economic consequences of the pandemic. We must shore up the recovery on new foundations, making the best use, best use of trends and technologies already in progress before the pandemic, the green transition and the digital transformation. In this endeavor, we must give special attention to those more vulnerable to the crisis and to the ongoing transformations in the economies and labor markets. This week, in the, in the Summit on Financing African Economies, which took place in Paris, we consolidate a consensus on the need of a new insurance of special drawing rights of $650 billion, uh, $32 billion of which will go to African countries. Only with adequate financing countries, especially the most vulnerable countries, will be able to fight the pandemic and foster recovery. We also agreed that, that universal access to vaccines should be attained, including via production in Africa. Third, the world needs to be better prepared to prevent future health crises. At the multilateral level, we must support, strengthen and reform the World Health Organization and promote the full implementation of international health regulations. Portugal is also willing to participate on the negotiation of an international treaty on pandemics within the scope of the WHO and having an international health regulation as its cornerstone. The One Health approach must also be at the center of our discussion. The impact of the effects of climate change in vector-borne diseases should be a top priority, as well as the challenges posed by antimicrobial resistance. The pandemic took us by surprise, but in the past year we have been learning from our response to it. We learned that it is better to combat the pandemic together than in isolation. That vaccine nationalism 
trade barriers and supply chain bottlenecks will only make us all worse off. That our national health services and their workers are the first and best line of defense against the current and future crisis. The Rome Declaration offers us a valuable guidance, and I thank all countries and organizations, as well as the scientific panel and civil society, for their contributions to the debate, helping us to do, be better prepared for our post-pandemic future. Thank you very much, and thanks especially to Mario to host this major event. Grazie mille!